Olorun ma re Oga ogo Ashe 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 Olorun ma re Jen yame Nkulunkulu Spirit moves in different ways. And so I want to, before I go on with my libation, I want to, can you put your hands together for my brother G Way? Had I performed the time when I was supposed to perform, I would not have had that energy <laughs> with me. Because he came after I was supposed to perform. I had to wait on somebody else. But this is how the universe works. The universe is about movement and flexibility. And those of us who remain stiff and rigid, we end up getting broken. We have to learn to be like the palm tree, the coconut tree, and the other tree that possesses the ability to sway with the storm. And so I give thanks. This evening, um, I choose to use the coconut water to do libation. The coconut is one of the most powerful food on the planet Earth. It is so powerful that the Most High, by whatever name you call the Creator, made certain that we have this food year round. Where most other fruits are seasonal, you get the coconut water year round. Um, even though it's primarily water, it is also an oxygen food. Besides carrying all the minerals that it carries within it. It is the purest form of the water on planet Earth. And as you know, as they say in Jamaica, when you drink coconut water, it goes straight to the heart. <laughs> And um, it is very powerful saying because this water is a cell food. It goes to every cell in the body. It not only purifies, but it nourishes. And so we give thanks for the most time for blessing us with the coconut water. And um, it is only found in the tropical regions. Certain parts of Africa and India, this, this coconut is known as the tree of life because of the fact that it not only provides us food, it provides us medicine, it provides us clothing, it provides us transportation. Yes, because way back then they would take the coconut tree and make a dog out and that's your raft down the stream. To those of you who are not familiar, Libation is a way in which we give thanks first and foremost to the Creator, Mother, Father, God. And when we speak coming out of my tradition, we not only acknowledge the masculine aspect of the Creator, we also acknowledge the feminine aspect of the Creator. Because it takes both the male and the female energy for creation to take place. Ashe. Mujuba Olodumare. Ashe. Ashe. Mujuba Olorun. Ashe. Mujuba Lofi Aye. Ashe. Mujuba Egunguns, the benevolent and beneficent ones. Ashe. Mujuba Bubu Orishas. Ashe. Umitutu Onatutu Elitutu Oritutu. Tutu Eshu, Tutu Ogun. Mujuba, could you repeat with me? Mujuba? Mujuba. Ia? Ia. Tobi Mi. Tobi Mi. Ashe O. Ashe Mujuba? Baba, Baba. Tobimi, Tobi Asheo. 
And uh, basically what I said, Majuba means to give thanks. Olodumare, Olorun, Olofiaye are names of the creator in the Yoruba language. Uh, Majuba Egunguns, the Egunguns are your ancestors. And I preface it with the benevolent and beneficent ancestors. Because some of our ancestors are the ones who have us in this predicament. And up to this day, we still see some of them in our society today, continuously selling us out. And so it is very important when you when you go to call on your ancestors that you preface it with the benevolent and beneficent ancestors because there's some of them you don't want to call. Uh, the Orishas are basically the elements. And the four basic elements that we acknowledge all the time, besides the others. And the first one is Oya, and she represents air. Three to five minutes without it, life ceases to exist. You cannot live without air, without oxygen. Oshun, she represents the water. More than 75% of your body consists of water. Sperm in the egg is more than 80% water. Your brain is more than 80% water. It is very important that you drink water, copious amount of water daily. That's one of the reasons why so many of our people today are suffering from dialysis, even diabetes. Yes, not drinking adequate amount of water. Right now we have juvenile diabetes rampant in our communities because we're giving our children juices and we're giving them all these various medications that is impacting on their liver and their kidneys and they're not drinking adequate amount of water. The sun, also known as Ra, sunlight, photosynthesis, no food can happen if the sun do not shine. Mother Earth, if she becomes barren, you could plant Monsanto or you can plant organic. <coughs> Ain't nothing coming forward. And so it is very important that we take care of Mother Earth, how we treat Mother Earth. And so when our ancestors acknowledge these elements during their rituals and stuff, it's not no hocus pocus, it's because they fully had the understanding that all of these elements are very important to our sustenance while we're here on planet Earth. Uh, this past couple of weeks, the Indian people from India, they just finished doing puja. And if you want to find out, you go Google that, puja, P-U-G-A, puja. They go down to the water. And they ask for the blessings and they thank their ancestors. The Jewish people just finished doing something called Talish or Takish. Rosh Hashanah. They take bread to the water. Asking for their sins to be forgiven for the year. For any sins or anything that has happened within that year for it to be forgiven. They also take chicken and cleanse themselves with the chicken. Put the chicken back on the cart and send it into the neighborhoods to be sold. When the chicken has absorbed all of their negative vibrations and energies. I mean, if you do the, the research, you will, you will see. You know, ain't no hocus pocus. All right? Um, the Anglicans, they will be having their harvest. And some of our ancestors practice the harvest because it is part of the tradition that comes out of the Torah or the Old Testament. And so everybody bring food to the harvest, prayers are done, thanksgiving songs is sang, and at the end of the day, the food is distributed 
among everybody else. Tomorrow, I have a time to have a spiritual church. I'm going to be there with my drums, and I'm going to be part of that harvest. Where they make prayers, they give thanks for everything that has transpired over the past year. They ask for blessings for the coming year, and they share the food and the love. We as African people who have been stolen, captured, and brought to various parts of this world, many of us have made the choice to give up our traditions. And it is your tradition, your heritage, that will bring you out of this abyss. Everybody else is holding on to theirs. You go to Chinatown, soon as you go, you're going to see the big Buddha. They don't hide it. You go in Queens, Indian people got statues with all kinds of various hands. Seven, eight, ten hands. Right in front of your face. And you don't even frown. You don't say nothing. You go up in there and you shop and you spend your money and you're glad to spend your money. But if you go into an African person place and you see a calabash or a candle, oh God, I ain't going in there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Necromancy. <laughs> you know, you're running hell to skelter. And that's why you are in this predicament, many of us. And until we fully understand that there's a continuum with life. There's no death in the African tradition. There's just transition from one place to the next. And that's why somebody wrote the song that we don't die, we multiply. There's no death. Where you think you came from before you got here? And when this physical body is finished, and you resort back to the spiritual realm where you think you're going. You are the trinity. Spirit, mental, and physical. The most powerful being your spiritual. Healing is your birthright. The body heals itself as long as you give it the correct tools and nutrients to do so. We have a variety of methods that are engaged in when we're doing healing. And today you are in a space that is demonstrating all of those methods. You have somebody doing Reiki, you have somebody doing massage therapy, you have in juicing, you have in organic fresh food, you know, and then you've just had the sister bring in the wonderful message to you dealing with the mental aspect of the healing. And so this is what we must return to. I call it RTTS, return to the source. We are not supposed to be suffering the kind of ailments that we're suffering from. Those who have captured us and those who are the enslavers of our ancestors will never have our best interests at heart. Once you fully understand that, you're going to find yourself out of the abyss that you're in. They don't have our best interests at heart. How many of you speak to yourself? Anybody speak to yourself? Okay. All right. You know? To those who don't speak to yourself, I seriously am advising you to have a relationship with self. And it starts by having a five minute every day. Don't say nothing. Just take five minutes, go in a corner, and sit down and relax. Don't say nothing. Then after that, take it to 10 minutes. 
And after a while, you're going to hear an inner voice. Your Ori begins to speak very loud to you. It's going to tell you all the moves you need to make. It's going to tell you which corner to turn and which person to see and who not to see. We need to develop once more that relationship with self. We don't have a relationship with self because we're not listening to ourselves. But if there's any question, and I mean any question, diabetes, AIDS, pregnancy, whatever, any question you have, I'm open. Pronto, stop all dairy products. Stop ingesting dairy products. Second thing you need to do is to stop ingesting any acid foods. Third thing you need to do is to increase your water intake. And yes, the mulling is one of the herbs that would help. And um, I have a card, I'll give it to you if you need some more answers in regards to that. I'll be willing to help you with that. Well, um, I'm here at the Magnolia Tree in the heart of Brooklyn. Uh, Brother Richie Rich and Marlon from Ujama Health Food are the ones that put this program together. Uh, this is the second one that they've invited me to. And basically, I poured libation, explaining the importance of libation, as well as speaking about health and healing. But my talk was more specifically about the coconut and the importance of the coconut water and in the fact that it is one of the most powerful food that we have on the planet Earth as well as the most high soil fit to make certain that this plant is a plant that grows year round whereas most other foods are seasonal. The coconut water is also an oxygen food and so besides the minerals that it possesses, it also nourishes our body with one of the most powerful things we need, which is oxygen. It is very important that when we are pouring libation and when we're calling on the ancestors, that we call on the ones that are the benevolent and beneficent ancestors. Because many of our ancestors are responsible for us being in this condition. In other words, they collaborated with those who enslaved us. And we, we have a lot of them who are collaborators right now as we're going through these trials and tribulations right here in Babylon. And so it's very important that when we call on our ancestors, we call on the benevolent and beneficent ones. And it is always a pleasure for me to be able to be with my people and to be able to share this information that the elders has passed on to me. I give thanks and thank you Brother Sean for the interview.